Welcome to the MetaWare Debugger Training. This is MDB Session 9, where we'll show how to use MDB's multi-core debugging capabilities. In this session, we'll introduce the Coordinated Multiprocess Debugger, or CMPD, feature of MDB and demonstrate how it can be used to efficiently debug a multi-core system. CMPD allows you to debug multiple processes from a single MetaWare debug session. Commonly, each process represents a single core on a multi-core SOC, where the cores are connected via a JTAG chain. Alternatively, the debugger can connect to cores that are physically separate, provided that each has an available debug connection. Finally, CMPD can even be used to debug a mix of physical cores and those modeled by one of the ARC simulator tools. Compared to using separate debugger instances to debug each core, CMPD provides a much more convenient interface, allowing data from each core to be viewed together in a single debug session. Further, CMPD makes it simple to coordinate execution of each core. Let's move on to the demo to see CMPD in action. In the demo, we'll start by showing how to set up a CMPD session. This can be done using the MDB GUI or directly from a command line. The command line option is useful when you want to invoke MDB from a script or a batch file. Once the CMPD session is started, we'll show various techniques for efficiently debugging with CMPD. We've now invoked MDB, and we'll start by configuring CMPD using the GUI. Select Multiprocess Session to put the debugger into CMPD mode. Now press the CMPD Options button to configure each process. For this demo, we'll set up a dual core debug session, so we need to add two processes, one for each core. Click the Add Processes button to add the first process. We first provide a string name for the first process. Let's call it Core1. Then we need to specify the process number in the Set Content field. This is usually a one-to-one -one mapping with the core number, but you can also specify a range in the case that you have one executable targeting multiple cores. Browse for the ELF file that you want downloaded to this core. Then press the Debugger Options button to configure the target connection and other properties. This opens the standard Debugger Options window. If you're not familiar with this window, please watch session one of this series, which explains the window in detail. For now, we will be running on the NSIM simulator, so we just need to select that under Target Selection, and then choose the ArcHS processor family to match the alpha we built. We'll click OK, and then OK again. You can now see that we've successfully configured the first process. Let's now repeat that same steps for the second process. Provide the, the name, core2, processor2, browse for the ELF file, set the debugger options, target selection, NSIM, and HS core. Click OK and OK again. Once you've configured all the cores, press OK and then OK again to start the debugger session. Before proceeding with the demo, let's review how to launch an equivalent CMPD session directly from the command line, bypassing the GUI setup. The first two lines Configure each individual process and save the configuration to a state file in the current directory. The third line actually invokes MDB 
and creates the previously defined process. These three commands could be put into a batch file or a script and used to invoke the debugger repeatedly without having to go through the GUI setup process each time. Now that the debugger has started, the text at the top of the window shows that it's a multi-process session. As with a standard debug session, a default window layout is shown, but it can be customized based on your needs. Let's start by looking at the Processes window, which opens by default in a CMPD session. This window is used to control which processes are in focus at any given time. If a core is in focus, this means that it will receive commands from the debugger. Setting and clearing focus is used to control whether you want to debug all cores together or each core individually. By default, both cores are in focus at startup. The small eyeglasses icon on the left denotes that a core is in focus. You can change focus in the following ways. Double click on a core to toggle its focus. The plus minus focus button has the same effect. Alternatively, you can set focus to one core only by selecting a line and pressing the focus button. The right click menu has an equivalent option. As mentioned earlier, if a core is in focus, it will receive debugger commands. For example, now that both cores are in focus, if we press run, then both cores will start executing. You can see that both are now running. We can also stop them both by pressing stop. Now let's set the focus on core 2 only. When we press run, we can see that only core 2 starts running. This focus concept applies for all debugger operations. Let's now take a look at how to use the various debugger windows while in CMPD mode. Notice that all windows are colored with a vertical bar on the left side. There is also a matching color dot on the Windows tab. All windows associated with a specific process are colored the same. In this case, Core 1 is red and Core 2 is green. You can also check the process number on the top of each window. It is always enclosed in square brackets. CMPD windows can be arranged in the same way as when debugging a single core. For example, let's put the two source windows side by side. Now we can see them both. When you want to open a new window, you'll notice that the display menu has changed somewhat. There is the standard menu as well as a new entry called Just One. If you select from the standard menu, the debugger will open instances of that window for all cores that are in focus. If you instead select from the Just One menu, it will always open only a single instance of the window, regardless of how many are in focus. Let's try opening the Registers window. Since we have both cores in focus, we see that there are two instances of the register window that are opened. Alternatively, I could have just opened a single instance of the window and toggled between the two displays. Let's see how toggling of windows can be done. You'll notice that each window now has two new buttons on the toolbar. The first button toggles the window state through all the processes. If you have a large number of processes, the drop-down is more convenient since you can select a process directly instead of toggling. Note that on the main toolbar, 
It's possible to toggle all displays to a single process using either the drop down and the apply button or the plus plus button. This can be convenient when screen real estate is limited and you only want to display one core's information at a time. Let's now look at how we can control execution in a multi-core scenario. The control buttons on the main toolbar for running, stopping, and stepping will control all processes which are in focus, as we saw a little bit earlier. For example, pressing run will start both cores running. Pressing stop will stop both of them. Pressing any of the stepping buttons will cause each core to step. If we remove focus from one core, then commands like stepping will only be sent to the in-focus core. It's possible to set one core running and step the other core by switching focus. So let's start core one, and now we'll change focus to core two, and we can continue our debug session with core two as core one continues to run. If we put the running core back into focus as well, you'll notice that both the run and the stop buttons are highlighted at the same time and the run animation down at the bottom is toggling between red and blue. This shows us that one core is running and one isn't. Let's stop both cores. It can often be more convenient to control each process's execution regardless of focus. You can add a stepping toolbar to a source or disassembly window via the right click menu. Right click, choose toolbars and stepping toolbar. We can repeat the same for the second core, toolbars, stepping toolbar. Now, even though both cores are in focus, we can control each core's execution independently. So now we set core one running using the local stepping toolbar and core two stays stopped. Note that it's possible to make the stepping toolbars appear by default at startup using the following option. It is possible to use a stop list with breakpoints in order to synchronize execution between processes. For example, you can set a breakpoint on one core, and when it's hit, the debugger will automatically stop the other. This must be done from the command line of the GUI, down at the bottom of the screen. As an example, let's set a breakpoint on core 1 at line 65 of our source file queens.c. First of all, we tell the debugger which core we are addressing using the square brackets and the process number. Then we'll use the b command, which is a short for breakpoint, and we'll specify the file queens.c on line 65. Then we can also add a condition or a command for it to execute after that breakpoint is hit by telling it to stop core 2. Press enter to insert the breakpoint and you can see that the red dot has been added. Now, if we run both cores, note that they're both in focus. When we hit the breakpoint, the second core stops wherever it was at the time of the first breakpoint. If your hardware is being built with Arc Connect and the Intercore debug unit, then you should enable support for this in the debugger with the command line option minus on equals use underscore MCD. This will allow these types of synchronized debugging operations to occur faster 
since the hardware can directly halt the second core when the first breakpoint is detected. The debugger techniques discussed in this presentation are covered in detail in the DesignWare Metaware Debugger User's Guide for ARC supplied with the Metaware toolset. In particular, please see Chapter 6, Debugging Multiple Processes with CMPD.